Okay. Okay. Why is it not letting me go live? Okay. Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Just want to update you all on the situation we've got going on tonight and tomorrow. You're going to hear some noise as Margo's getting ready to come into the studio. I think we're about to cut teases here. Uh, so you'll hear Liz in the background, too, most likely I hear right now. Again, there they are. Got Liz and Margo. I'm streaming. Do a little Facebook Live. <clears throat> um, we, can, we can tape whatever, too. Yeah, if you're that's ready what to I was tape. hoping you would tackle. Yeah. Should we walk? Away? I know. Hello, everybody. I'm sure we've got questions, but again, yeah, the we, the we can we can tape the tease with this okay. going as well. Right. Yeah, well, just um, get people going. It's just all you, my friend. Oh, it's all me. Yeah. Okay, so I'm doing the tease. Yeah. All right. Well, we can do that. Okay. All right. Well, I got my IFB, and they can just let me know back there. Get this forward here a little bit. There's a dust storm right there. Somewhere. Yeah, I know. It's horrible out there. Mm. All right, we got about 500 of you on here. I'm going to tape this tease for the 10 o'clock news. I didn't know if you know that or not, but we always tape these, and then they air later. When I was a kid, I always thought they were at the studio the whole time. I was like, man, they're there the whole time. Uh, let's just do it from right here. I'm fine. All right. Let me... Okay, let me stop this here. All right. I will be right with you, folks. Thanks for tuning in here. All right. All right. Three, two, one. Tonight at 10, we're tracking the potential for a couple of rounds, maybe even three or four rounds of strong to severe storms. They'll be coming at us overnight tonight and definitely through the afternoon and evening hours tomorrow. I'll tell you what to expect with the latest track coming up again tonight at 10. All right. Thanks. Okay, now we can get back to business here. Okay, we're going to go through the latest data here. Going to talk about tonight and then uh, tomorrow, of course. So sometimes it's hard to look at when you see those helicity tracks I've been posting on my page, but it'll make more sense when we put all this into motion. Uh, so let's go ahead and go forward here. Huntsville looks beautiful right now all across the area. It's a little windy and we've hit 80 degrees. Now tonight, what we're watching as we go through the overnight hours, this is more likely going to be closer to two or three in the morning. It's going to be the northwest corner of the state. And the challenge is some of the model guidance says nothing's going to happen. Other model guidance says uh, we're going to have a little bit of action there, but everything agrees on development here and perhaps explosive rapid development by around noon tomorrow in the area in white, and that includes just about all of us here too. 
there is that high risk for severe weather, but we like to focus on the main impact area. And a lot of times people will see that high risk area and think I'm not in the high risk. So it's not going to be as bad. It's going to potentially be bad everywhere. And it could be that way in just about the entire state. So I'm going to show you here. I'm going to go back on this a little bit. This is the Barron Services here in Huntsville, their model, and it's really good when it comes to severe weather, and it's nailed most of our events so far this year. So the challenge here becomes, we may get a tornado watch after midnight for areas west of I-65, and it's more likely that more action may happen in the western part of that watch, which will be in Mississippi, but we still have to use caution and watch this as we go through uh, the afternoon and evening hours especially but it's overnight tonight when you're sleeping make sure you got ways to receive weather warning information you notice how this model doesn't flare much up there the one thing i do see in this model and it's going to update before the 10 o'clock news i'll have another look at it but you notice this thunderstorm that it has and again model guidance is just that it tells us the spacing between the thunderstorms tells us the setup to expect and it's going to show paths here, and you're going to see that on the uh, Helicity tracks too. But what this is doing is it's, it's pretty much showing one thunderstorm developing out ahead of this main line. And the, the challenge here is that particular storm there could become a supercell. The environment's going to be favorable. It's out there all on its own, so that's why we want to watch that uh, particular storm right here closely. As that tracks northeast, that's where you could see this problem here with that putting down a tornado. And the rotation tracks actually show that. So that's got it moving through the Huntsville metro area. So just heads up, as early as 9, 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. And this is one of the reasons um, they have canceled the, uh, the parade, the St. Patrick's Day parade. And a lot of that was, there's just so much uncertainty here. We've had model guidance that said it's gonna be raining all morning, but it's looking less likely for that. So as we go forward here, Notice this big break here starting to show up in the model guidance. This big break pre presents a challenge here because those arrows, that south wind, is really starting to push in deeper moisture here. So in reality, if this model were to verify, that high risk that's to the south of us will get shifted to the north just because that unstable air is coming farther north. And this model also shows sunshine breaking out ahead of all this around one o'clock in the afternoon. So while it's looking like we're gonna have several rounds of these severe storms, I don't think we're all completely covered at the same time initially. That'll happen as the line progresses to the east. Watch what's happening here. This is the problem as we get towards one o'clock, and this model I think is only popping up the time every hour. But we get these super, what, what can I do for you? Okay, I'm, I'm doing Facebook Live, but I can answer questions. Pre-positioning pre, pre people tomorrow. Okay. So I've got the one metro, Nick, Marshall County. I was going to put Morgan County, but should we go Shoals or Morgan County? Um, I would go the Shoals. Go the yeah. The, the thing is, is you're probably going to have one area that develops out ahead of it, and then you're going to have this area I'm talking about right now where we just see multiple rounds. Um, they're going to want to be south of the storms because if the supercells fire up you're going to want to be south of the storm you don't want to be north of it or in the path of it so you want to be on the southern edge of the storm as it moves by so Calvert County probably or um, Florence? you know I'd almost be down at Russellville or Moulton is where I would position Russellville Moulton so if I put them in Moulton they can go to the show yeah if you're in Moulton you can light into the cater you can go to the shoals and the farther south you are, you're, you're not being chased by the storm. You're going in after it. I'll put her in Molten. Then. Yeah. Molten, yeah. So it's Cali to Molten. All right. Very much. You bet. All right, but just uh, talking about uh, where we're going to position crews tomorrow. And I'm not, when I say go to Molten, I don't mean Molten's going to get hit. What, what you try to do is you try to position yourself to the south of these supercells. You don't want to be north of them. I mean, it, this is for the storm chasers that are going to be out there and our crews in the field. So here's what we're discussing here. The Haleyville, Molten, Muscle Shoals area, around one, two o'clock, these would be those supercell storms uh, that begin to fire up. And 
I know this has a lot of history to the, some of these areas as well uh, with the tracks. So these storms are going to track northeast. You kind of see this area moving towards Decatur, Danville, Hartzell around 2 o'clock, eventually threatening the metro area. One good thing about these types of storms is only one good thing, is that is we can give plenty of warning, plenty of heads up, and we're already starting the warning process here, that potential. So again, the heightened threat of severe weather happens one, two, three, four o'clock in the afternoon, and then eventually this all kind of merges. But we could still see more of these supercell type storms. You see this other one coming out uh, near Smith Lake, moving into Coleman, and that's uh, roughly between 3, 3.30, and that eventually moves towards Eva, and Valermosa Springs, Owens Crossroads, Hampton Cove, and we still have other supercells out here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Those are my allergies kicking in for that south wind. So as we go beyond this, notice getting hit very hard in muscle shoals at this time. It's possible we'll have these embedded tornadoes, but in past outbreaks like this, we have seen, only I have seen, I've been here almost 30 years now. So what we, we start to see the trend as we get later into the day, the supercells develop east of the main line. The main line uh, then starts to present just very heavy rain, embedded tornadoes, and very vivid lightning, large hail. So that becomes more of a threat for these cells coming across the same area where we still watch uh, the thunderstorms developing out ahead of this. So this is uh, roughly four o'clock. And you notice we're still looking at potential supercell near Moulton, south of Winchester. And again, we haven't talked a lot about Tennessee. You guys are in this with us here in Alabama, even though there's, I don't believe there's a state of emergency in Tennessee. Uh, I would consider myself in the same situation there. And even in Pulaski, Leoma, Lawrenceburg, Winchester. Uh, so we continue to watch this. I'm going to show you those helicity tracks here in just a second. So notice this blow up here moving out of Coleman County, the Hansville area, Joppa, Arab, right there around 5 o'clock. And that moves up again towards Owens Crossroads, Hampton Cove, Gurley, Paint Rock, and continuing on, the Woodville area. And then here comes the line and embedded tornado risk there. By 7 o'clock, it looks like you're probably going to clear out in the shoals in Russellville. But we're now going past sunset, so this becomes the nighttime event. Still could have one blast of severe thunderstorms in the Huntsville metro area, another one south of Coleman uh, near Smoke Rise and Warrior. And up here, um, Meridianville, just to the east of there as you go out towards Chase. And there's that supercell. Look at that one there. Popping up from Arab just to the north of Douglas, moving towards Gunnersville, eventually Goose Pond, Scottsboro. And we still have storms tracking across Sand Mountain here at 11 o'clock at night. So if anything, this looks like it's later. And then there's some more convection here into the shoals around one in the morning. So hopefully that won't be severe. So let me go in and show you these helicity tracks. I don't show this a lot on TV because there's just a lot to unravel. The fact that it doesn't show much overnight is a good sign. This model's a lot more triggered towards tomorrow afternoon. So what this represents, this would represent a supercell with rotation, and that's the rotation track. And in most cases, this would be, you know, a tornado track. So you notice this is coming through that favorable area east of Phil Campbell uh, near Moulton, and then up towards Rogersville and Coxie. And then there's a secondary one coming on the west side of Smith Lake, moving towards Decatur then moving towards uh, Madison, Harvest, Monrovia, north side of Huntsville, and there's another one there around 3 o'clock near Coleman, moving up towards Eva, Valermosa Springs, Owens Crossroads, and at the same time, you see there's a lot to keep track of. There's another one west of the Shoals around that time. So as we continue on, you just see these paths being laid out, and then there's that that other one. So what this tells me is we're not going to be able to let our guard down on anything. We're going to be watching everything as it moves northeast. And there's even the track here near Muscle Shoals around midnight. So there's a lot, there's a lot to talk about. So we're going to continue to keep you up to date on this. And uh, overall, we're almost past the point of, of updating. 
we're kind of at the what we would call now casting time where we're just going to have to start watching the radar in current conditions and go from there. I know a lot of people are just overloaded. There's graphic after graphic on social media and there's different opinions, but there's still the possibility we could see some rain cooled air in here. I think it's maybe a 20% chance and that would be the best case. That or storms develop south and choke us off. That would be the best news of all to wake up to tomorrow morning. Uh, so again, new, got, new model guidance will be coming out before the 10 o'clock news tonight and I uh, will be sharing that with you. Again, there's going to be a lot of specific questions. What time is it going to be in this spot, this spot? We will be giving extended storm tracks tomorrow. If you're in a mobile home, I urge you to find a safe place as early as tonight. And if, if you can't get there tonight, tomorrow morning, there should be a window of opportunity. But um, Someone just said, it. what's the chance it, it shifts a little more towards the east, towards DeKalb County? And the problem here is, this is going to impact everybody. I don't, I don't know what I've said that makes you think you're not going to have an impact by severe weather. I know you see these tracks. This is an idea of the atmospheric setup. There have been tracks in the last 24 hours that take a track right along the bluff there near Section and up into DeKalb County. So Sand Mountain Magic is a very real possibility tomorrow. Um, I know we've had historic outbreaks in the past and it's all been quiet and then all of a sudden something ramps up like the Rainsville tornado is a prime example of that. We were at, at the point in that event where it looked like uh, things were quieting down. We had just lost the high top radar and then all of a sudden the storm f uh, blew up uh, near Gunnersville and then it laid down that horrible EF5 tornado there in Rainsville. So again, we will be very vigilant. You should remain weather alert as we go through the day and it's, it's hard to give, you can't give warnings, so to speak, based on model guidance. We're going to have to wait till the storms actually develop. Appreciate you guys tuning in. We'll have another Facebook Live. We'll be on our YouTube page as well, and that'll be coming up tonight at 930. So I'll see you then. Oh, I got a newscast coming up here in about 13 minutes too. I'll have data there too.